Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Sense. Green fragrances are in right now. Everybody wants them and Valentino has just released theirs. Born in Roma, green stravaganza. Everybody's gonna get that green, right? Green is in. Now the Born in Roma line and I have not always been the best of friends. When the first Born in Roma came out, I wasn't really uh, massively pumped about that. I love the original Womo and Womo Intense and Born in Roma, you know, kind of Invictus, he wasn't really my thing. Now I'll still recommend that one to a, a younger guy who's looking for a compliment puller or versatile fragrance, but do I personally want to wear it? No. Thankfully though, that Born in Roma line has gotten better and better and better with each subsequent release. Born in Roma Intense that came out last year. <sighs> Awesome. Just a 10 out of 10. It smells fantastic. It's versatile. It's a compliment puller in the air. It is just lights out. It's irresistible. I love it. And now we come to this green stravaganza, the newest in the line. And uh, as I said earlier, green is in right now. Lots of green fragrances out there. So how does this one stack up. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Now, I did just get this in, so this is a glorified first impressions video. I've only been wearing this for two days, so keep that in mind. If I can find this one in the US, I will leave it linked in the description. I bought my bottle off of eBay and it came here from France, but this one has started popping up here a little bit recently in the US. Let's kick things off here by taking a quick look at the presentation. Then we'll start talking about the fragrance itself and how this guy smells and whether it's one that you should be on the lookout for. So here we have the box. This is your typical Valentino Womo born in Roma style with the name of the fragrance, name of the house, size and concentration on the front. This is an eau de toilette, 100 mil size, nothing up top or on the sides. On the back, you have your ingredients. And then on the bottom, you have your badge code. Mine is 38X9007. And here we've got the bottle. Again, that typical Valentino Womo Born in Roma style, but it looks really good. I like the gradient, a little bit darker up top, lighter at the bottom. The green coloration of the fragrance is nice. Uh, green coloration of Valentino there on the front label, nice as well. On the bottom, sticker with your badge code. And this has a cap that does click into place. Let's go ahead and do the usual. Blast out a couple sprays here, or three, that's good too. Before we start talking about the fragrance and how it smells, here are some codes that you can use if you shop online at any of these sites to save some money. So Triple Traders, you can score a bunch of clones there at good prices. Max Aroma, Twisted Lily, you can get the hookup on some niche fragrances. And then fragflex.com is a great discounter. GS11 will get you 11% off the whole site. All right, green extravaganza. How does it smell? Well, uh, first things first, the note breakdown. Super simple. Bergamot up top, coffee in the mid, and then vetiver in the base, which when I saw that the first time when it was first announced, I was kind of uh, slightly confused, I guess you could say. Mainly because it doesn't necessarily read like it goes hand in hand all that well, because it's green extravaganza, green. Fresh, natural, a coffee is one of the main notes. Now it's not that that can't work, of course, it's just when I first saw the note breakdown and the color scheme and everything in the name, I was like, mm, coffee is probably not the first thing that pops to my mind when I think of something green. So when you first spray this fragrance on, when you first blast it and take a whiff, it is sweet. Yeah, quite sweet, actually. Uh, it has a little bit of a, bubble gummy type feel to it, no doubt. Um, you may be able to draw comparisons to a bunch of different fragrances with this one, but I don't think it really smells necessarily exactly like anything out there. We have been getting a lot of that here recently, so it's, you know, it's its own fragrance that kind of plays in the ballpark of other fragrances out there, you could say. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Invictus Victory Elixir, which I think is amazing, you can pick out probably 10 different fragrances uh, in that one. You, you could be like, oh, well, the top reminds me of this, this, and this, and then the mid reminds me of this, this, and this. Ultimately, it's its own fragrance. It doesn't smell like any of them. That's kind of what's going on here. The way that green sweetness comes across off the top could remind you of bits and pieces of uh, Spice Bomb Night Vision, Eau de Parfum, uh, Parfums to Marley Greenly, different things like that. Uh, but those fragrances use often uh, apple with bergamot. This is more so obviously just focusing in on that bergamot, at least as far as the note breakdown goes. And you don't pick up that uh, 
that apple kind of feel that you get in those too. But it's still sort of in that vein. Kind of one of those deals where do you like how those smell off the top? You'll probably like how this one smells. So yeah, sweet, bubble gummy, uh, a touch dusty underneath there. And it is very green. It's fresh but it's not uh, like a natural freshness. It doesn't have any zinginess really for me. None of that like bright kind of effervescence that you can sometimes get with the citrusy opening. This more just leans into, as I've said like twice now, uh, that sweet side of things. And in the opening here, along with that sweetness, has kind of a, a soapy aspect to it. So like a little bit of a soapy clean sweetness, if that makes any sense. Not overly powerful in terms of that soapiness, but you can still pick it out. Pretty quickly on, you'll be able to pick up that coffee, but it is maybe not exactly the way you would expect. It's almost like a green coffee, which again, that's kind of the whole theme with the fragrance, but uh, the way that the brand describes it is an espresso shot. And so reading that initially, I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be like a concentrated coffee note, you know, pretty dense, pretty heavy, maybe even a little bit uh, roasted around the edges, something like that, and that's not what you get. Instead, to me, it's more this light, little bit of coffee around the edges that you can really easily miss. Actually, the first couple times I sprayed this one on and let it dry down, I didn't really pick up coffee at all, honestly. I had my wife smell it, she drinks coffee every day, religiously, just straight up coffee. And um, she got no coffee whatsoever either. It wasn't until like legitimately the fourth or fifth time that I sprayed this one on and let it dry down and was, you know, going back to it and smelling it over and over again that I actually was able to pick up that coffee and go, oh, there it is. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of been hanging out there. So to me, it's not really a focal point. And the way that it comes across is not really how they pitch it. An espresso shot, it is not. And this one stays pretty consistent, the opening through the mid. Yes, the coffee pops out a little bit, but it's, it's a bit player for me. It doesn't really change all that much until you hit the dry down. And in the dry down, most of that sweetness is gone. And at that point, it's, it's basically just a, semi-dry vetiver kind of wood blend. It's not really like a, a straight up vetiver. Uh, this is, again, kind of a mixture of different woody notes that has a, a dry nature to it, a semi-dry nature to it. It's one of those deals where, to me, being a fan of vetiver, yeah, I can pick out a, a little bit of it in there, but it doesn't really have a whole lot that grabs your attention. It's just, you know, passable. It becomes a decent smelling, woody, masculine scent in the dry down, uh, but not a whole heck of a lot going on there, if I'm honest. I know the note breakdown is very simple and the note breakdown being simple does not always translate into the fragrance. Being simple, you can have a very simple note breakdown, but then the fragrance comes across very complex. And sometimes you can have the opposite. You can have a note breakdown that's huge, then when you smell the fragrance, it smells pretty simple from opening into a dry down. This one has a simple no breakdown and it smells pretty simple. Not a whole heck of a lot changes from the opening into the mid. And then the dry down is uh, a fairly basic woody blend. So yeah. One other thing that I'll say about this one, the performance does not seem to be all that great for me. Now it is an eau de toilette, but there are a lot of eau de toilette fragrances out there that are pretty strong, that last a long time, that project heavily. This one does not seem to last that long off my skin. Again, I've not worn it a huge amount or anything, so take this with a grain of salt, but in the wearings that I've done, and uh, you know, let it dry down, and then spray it on again, and let it dry down, you know, over the course of two days, it really seems to last, you know, maybe four or five hours off my skin before it's getting really, really weak. And it projects pretty well initially. With all that sweetness off the top, it pushes decently. But once that starts to settle in, it dissipates pretty quick. So overall, in terms of seasonality usage, I would say this is spring, summer, daytime, not really evening. Of course, as always, if you like it, wear it whenever you want. Daytime, nighttime, fall, spring, winter, summer, doesn't really matter. Uh, just be aware that you may want to spray on more or even more than that, depending on uh, the weather and where you're going. So how is green extravaganza for me overall? 
it's, it's kind of been like some middle ground area. There are positives, there are negatives. I think compared to the new LeBeau, it's worse across the board for me personally. The new LeBeau, the opening is just awesome. In the air, it smells great. As it dries down, it's got nice changes and just overall works better for me. A little bit more of a, a compliment puller, uh, comes across decently unique as well. That one I love. And I compare those two because they're both new and they're both green fragrances. This one, the performance lets it down a little bit. You know, it's, it's average to subpar as far as the overall performance goes. Usability, versatility is there. It's the type of scent people are gonna like. It's, it's not doing anything that's gonna be, uh, you know, potentially off-putting, so you don't really have to worry about that. But at the same time, does it really capture my attention the way that Born in Roma Intense did? No, not really. The opening is sweet, it's pleasant, it has actually a bit of a soapiness to it. That dustiness that I mentioned before, uh, with this in the opening, it can come across like a little bit of a green soap ash, like a sweeter green soap. So it's not gonna come across like Mugler cologne. Again, kind of going back to what I said before in that wheelhouse of something like a Greenly or a Night Vision Eau de Parfum uh, with more of a slight soapy tinge, I guess. So this ends up becoming one of those deals where you smell it and you say, oh, that's, that's pretty nice. You know, it's pretty pleasant, but it doesn't really wow you necessarily and i think that's that's kind of the drawback here for me is it doesn't wow me initially and then it doesn't really change or evolve a huge amount past that so you're you're kind of stuck in that limbo where you go oh yeah it's 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 okay but it's not really great and it's it's just it's staying the same it's staying oh now it's just a little woody now it's gone so this is gonna be one of those ones where I would advise you, as always, to sample it first if you can, uh, but I think that uh, paying up for this one is probably not a, a really great move. I would rank this in like the Born in Roma hierarchy, just my own personal taste, below uh, Womo Intense, easily, below Coral Fantasy, below Yellow Dream, and above the original Born in Roma. So that's that's kind of where this one falls for me. I do think though, if this drops in price in the future at discounters and you can pick it up for, you know, 50 bucks, something like that, or somewhere in that general vicinity, at that point it's a pretty sweet pickup, but you know, 110, 120, 130, something like that, uh, which is what I paid for it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a no-go, better things out there. So there we go, green extravaganza. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you could get some pretty good usability out of it. It's just, I think, uh, of the new releases I've smelled so far this year, which isn't many, but the Scent Elixir and the new LeBeau are, are both better than this one. So there we go. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.